everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Well, as you can see here, I got some boxes and I got one from Johnny Seeds and I think this is my rapid rooter. So today's video is going to be on seeding and I'm also going to start with some spinach and I'm going to show you how I start it and then I'm going to do another video to show you the progress of how you get your spinach um, from the seeding into the cubes and into the channel. So that'll be a whole nother video. It's a whole nother thing to do. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this box from Johnny's and see how my order is. Okay, here's my packing list. Oh good, got my Swiss chard. I have to use a new one this year because um, the other one I was using, which was a mini Swiss chard, they discontinued it. So this one they said is good for hydroponics. It's Charbel and it's a red um, Swiss chard I've been using. And the other thing I'm going to be seeding today is my uh, Robolski tomatoes because I'm going to get those started a lot earlier. Oh, I've got my kohlrabi, I've got my mini bok choy, white bok choy, some Carlton. And another favorite with the CSA is Italian, um, dandelion greens, more cat soy, and more han tai tei. That's how you say it. So good, got everything I ordered. And here is, I hope, the rapid rooters because I like to use these to start the tomato seeds. Y'all know. Um, Hydroponic tomato seeds aren't cheap, so it's good to use a good starting growing medium. And yep, rapid rooters. Like everything else, they've gone up in price, but for me it's worth using them. There's 50 of them each bag. So, let me get started. Now I'm ready to do my tomato seeds. Like I said, I do the Rabulski. These seeds are not cheap. They're like a dollar a seed. So that's why I want to use the rapid rooters for these guys to make sure I get 100% germination. So I use my uh, tray here that has the different cells and of course my bottom tray. Got everything all clean and sanitized. And then these guys take off the top advertising and they come in a Ziploc bag, which is really nice because if you don't use them all, then they stay nice and moist because these guys are already pre-moistened. So I'm going to go ahead and get these guys in the tray here. And then what I do after I get the seeds planted, I uh, do a bottom water. So I'll show you that in a minute. So after I get all these guys planted, uh, Doug and I are going to make a run to Crap King because I ordered my perlite and vermiculite. So I need to get that and get the beta buckets ready as these guys are sprouting. What's nice about these rapid rooters too, I don't know if you can see, there's a little tiny hole in there. That's where you put the seed in. So if you're interested in getting some rapid rooters here, I know Doug's going to put a link down below to show you where we get them from. Oh, look at that. I got an extra one. It's supposed to be 50 in the bag and I got 51 because this is 50. <laughs> Lucky me. So the reason that I use Robolski in the hydroponic greenhouse is that they're rated for hydroponics. If you go on the um, Johnny Seeds catalog or on their website, it tells you what seeds are rated for different environments. And this one, like I said, is rated for the hydroponic greenhouse. And it's been tried and true for me for the past five or six years. I did have a comment about using big beef, I think it was, and I looked it up and it's not rated for uh, hydroponics. So I want to stay with something that I know works for me. And it is powdery mildew resistant and all these years I've been planting it, I haven't had any powdery mildew in it. And on it I should say and I've been very happy with the success of it all my farm market customers love it when you cut it through it's you know uh, red all the way through there's hardly any waste and it has a nice sized fruit it's not super big but it's big enough that you get a slice for a sandwich so I'm gonna stick with it so now I'm going to seed these guys like I said there's a hundred seeds in here I got 50 trays I do have some started already because I think we're gonna do about 80 plants this year two in each beetle bucket so I'm gonna get another 50 started here the, re the way I like to do it for me is to put them in the palm of my hand. Make sure my hand's all dry. I don't dump them all. I just dump a few out at a time. Make sure I don't spill it. And I use my tweezers to get them in. So you just pick up one at a time and stick it in the little hole. It's a little time consuming, but it's worth it.
Okay, down to the last few here. Another little pointer, it's good to stick the seed all the way down to the bottom of the little hole that's provided. They seem to germinate really good when they're down there. Okay, here goes the last seed. Get that guy in there. So, put these back into the envelope carefully. And then, I, like always, store my seeds in my little refrigerator that I keep like at 38, 40 degrees. Now this, I'm going to put a um, cover over it. I'm going to do one of the black domes on it to keep it in the dark, like it's in the soil, and keep the humidity in. Put it out in the control tunnel where I have all my other seeds, about 70 degrees. I used to use a heat pat mat thing to keep them going, but those things scare me. I've heard of too many horror stories of them catching on fire, so I just keep my control tunnel at 70 degrees to germinate everything. So let me go put it out there. Oh, forgot to tell you guys about one more step I have to do. You don't want to top water these because if you do, the seed will float out and you'll lose it. So what I do is I bottom water these and I just put it up just like a half inch or so, just enough so the moisture wicks up through the uh, growing medium here, through the rapid rooter, and keeps it nice and moist to give it a good uh, environment for germination. So ideally, tomatoes like a pH adjusted water to 6.0. I use my nutri lettuce nutrient water, I've been using it for years, I know some people are going to say I'm crazy, but it still works. And this is at 5.8, and the EC on this is 1.7, like I said, it's the lettuce formula, but it works for the germination process, so once these guys get bigger, then I'll get them on the tomato formula. It looks like I need a little bit more in there. I'll be right back. So I didn't have quite enough of the uh, pH adjusted nutrient water in here, so I'm just adding a little bit more down to the bottom. There, got him all. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to make sure the bottoms are in there so the moisture can wick up. Take one of my old black trays and cover this guy up. And I actually check on these guys twice a day just to make sure there's enough water and they don't dry out. Okay, like I said, I um, got 100 seeds here, so there should be 50 more here. I put them in my uh, little tray here, keep it in my refrigerator, do it alphabetically. So I keep them in the fridge and everything stays good for you. So the first thing I'm going to seed is my spinach here. So these are the supplies I need. I need hydrogen peroxide, I need some water, paper towels, my spinach seed and I use Corvair because it's a slow to bolt spinach and I've been using it for the past three or four years and I've had really good luck with it here in the channels and you need a couple styrofoam plates so the first thing I need to do I don't measure anything I know there was a formula that I was supposed to do but I just kind of um, after the years I just kind of wing it brand new hydrogen peroxide so I gotta open it up hang bear with me okay got that opened up here so I'll put the cap back on nice and tight so what the hydrogen peroxide does, it softens the seed so it can break open and the radical, which is the first root, can come out. And that's what you want to see. You want to make sure that every one of these germinates before you put it into your rock wool because a lot of them won't germinate hydroponically and it's a waste of rock wool and it's a waste of seeds and it's just a waste of time basically. So I just kind of, I think it's like a couple teaspoons. So I just kind of stick it in there and kind of stir it up a little bit. Then I take my paper towels and you want to line a plate you want to make sure they're going to hold the moisture because you want to keep these guys nice and not soaking wet but you want to keep them pretty moist so then I put a little bit in the paper towel let it absorb through now I'm going to make sure I get enough on it the first time because I did that one time I put the seeds on I was like oh it's not wet enough I put the water in the seeds all washed off to the side so Live and learn. Just a little bit more. Okay, and my spinach seeds. Okay, so here's my spinach seeds. And you can tell they're little round hard guys, so it's hard to get them to germinate, like I said. So you sprinkle them in here, in this nice moist environment they're gonna be in. Don't get them too, too close together, because when you wanna take them off of here and put them in your oasis cube it's a little bit easier if there's some space between them i'm not doing a whole lot because i'm not doing a winter market this year so this is just for doug and myself and the family so i'd like to like maybe have three or four trays of spinach when i was doing the farm market i had like 12 15 trays and that was enough to get quite a few pounds off of it to be profitable at the farmer's market 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Put these guys back in here. Don't want to waste any seeds. And I've learned to close my seeds up after you get done. So can you see how nice that looks there? So then you take another paper towel, and you kind of put it on there, and then you want to fold all these edges over. Because if you leave them hanging over the side of the uh, paper plate here, the water will keep draining off and it dries out. That's another live and learn lesson. So just kind of put them over there. Everybody's all nice and wet. And I'll check these guys in about 36 hours and the first root or the radical should be out. And then I'll show you how I uh, pick them up with tweezers and put them into the oasis cubes. Okay, I'm looking at this guy. He is a little dry, so I am going to drip a little bit more water on here. And of course I made too much water with the hydrogen peroxide. So you know what? I think I'm going to seed another tray. So I forgot to show you guys the most important part. You have to make sure you put another plate on top to seal in the humidity and keep it moist. So yeah, make sure you put another plate on top and this is a little um, spinach sandwich. So once I put the lid on, I bring them out to the control tunnel, which is also my germination room because I have a heater in here, a separate heater from everything else, and I keep it about 70 degrees, constant temperature, and that seems to be the best for germination of most of my seedlings. I'm planting some tatsoi here. They got a little leggy because they weren't underneath the grow lights, but I'm getting into the channels since I have the nutrient tank all cleaned up. So they should green up and take off here shortly. We've got a couple of sunny days coming up with sunny 70 degree weather, Indian summer. So looking forward to seeing these guys progress. So you all know that I like to use the Oasis cubes. For me, they're a lot easier to use. They break apart easier than the um, rock wool. And then I'm able to get them down in the channels a lot easier because they just fit perfectly in there. So I'll finish getting these guys planted, but I just wanted to show you how easy these guys all break apart. See? Then they just go apart and they're ready to go in the channels. Got a little mold on this guy, so I gotta throw them away. I wanted to show you one more thing. Look at the empty cubes here. I must have got distracted while I was uh, seeding. Oh well. So here's some tatsoi growing. As you can tell with this channel here, had an emitter problem, got it cleared out with the canned air. These guys here in the front made it. So the cat soy is looking good, had some nice sunny days. Down here I got some tokabacana going, but I didn't have enough channels washed to finish planting all the uh, 576 heads I wanted to get in here. So I'm going to go up to the nursery channels because I washed some channels just to get it going here. I've been kind of lazy washing channels. But I'll get them planted in here. Also going to plant some Five star and Swiss chard I planted for me and put that back here since it's winter time and this is the roadside and the way my greenhouse is facing this is the best place to get light for the low light days. This is the lettuce and the Swiss chard ready to go into the channels. Probably should have went in a little bit earlier and the roots aren't too bad down there. I'll get them going and you can hear the exhaust fan on. We have had the most wonderful fall this year. Warm and dry. So, can't complain. Okay, added the tetso I need to plant too into my tray here with my lettuce and Swiss chard. And we'll go on down here and uh, plant it in the freshly clean channels. Okay, so I got my channels here clean. Got my toku bacana. Pull them across the way. And let's start getting these guys planted. You guys all know how much I like my oasis cubes. The other ones I just planted a day or so ago, so these aren't too far behind getting in the channel, so I don't think I'm going to have a problem with different sizes during harvest. Yep, nope, that guy didn't have any in them. And like always, I don't thin out the tokabacana. You want a full head in each one of these cubes. One head goes into a bag and goes off to the customer. And there's probably about 10 seeds in each one of these. I like to do it upside down for some reason. It just makes it easier for me to um, break the cubes apart. So, on to the next channel. 
still got lots more channels to clean in here. But I'll get it done. Not too worried about it. There's always something to do in the greenhouse. These guys are a little too big to put in here. They're kind of breaking apart a little bit. But shouldn't stun them too bad. At least the roots, the roots still look pretty good. They're not all grown together. So then, so I don't have any open squares here, I'm going to go ahead and start my uh, five-star lettuce at the end of this channel here. So I just did a few rows of that. And these guys have really nice roots on them. Look how nice and white those are. And I'm not ripping them apart too much because once you start ripping roots apart, you really stunt your plants down. So I'm just going to keep planting these few channels and then I'll show you what I'm going to do before I um, connect up the emitters because this section hasn't been on forever. So I'm going to clean up some lines. So I'll show you that next. Well, I got all the channels planted I wanted to do, and I got a lot here that aren't cleaned and ready to be planted, but because this line here is going to feed the ones I just planted, I'm going to clear this line out. So I'm going to turn it on, let it drip a little bit here on the ground, and I got the end all the way down here open first because I want to get any of that stagnant water that was sitting in that black pipe out of there so I don't put any old contaminated water into my system. So I'm going to let that drain for a minute until the water looks pretty clear now just to clear it out because you don't want to put any old water in your system you know, take all the precautions you can to keep everything clean and sanitized so now that i got that done i'm going to turn this back off here and then i am going to take all of these here and i'm going to take my um, paper clip things my black paper clip things and put these off so then i can just put my ones down there the emitters into the pipes or the channels that I just did. You can see these guys here, right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put these guys in. And then I'm also going to go back through and make sure these guys are working. Because as you saw before, I had a couple up there and I think it was in the tat soy that the uh, emitter wasn't working and I almost lost a whole row. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, got the system back on. I'm going to go ahead now and turn this off because the black line's fine and then i'm going to check the uh emitters i just put in to make sure they're all working perfectly so like i always say you have to be proactive instead of reactive when it comes to hydroponics and your greenhouses so there they're all in ready to go i hope you guys like today's video on the seating you can tell i've been doing a lot of seating the greenhouse is getting nice and full nothing more satisfying than a full greenhouse so like always, leave me any questions, comments, and suggestions down below, and we'll see you guys next video.